Hello everyone, my name is Mark, and I'm from Birmingham in England, not Alabama. Uh, what I'm going to show you here is how to do the JTAG wiring on a Xenon motherboard uh, using two diodes. These are high speed diodes. I'll just try and get them on camera. Sorry, shit webcam. Here they are, yeah. So these are 1N914 diodes. Um, all you're going to need is two of these, some Kynar wire. Kynar wire is just real thin. It depends what gauge it is, but this is this is my Kynar wire. Fucking hell, is it even going to show up? Yeah, there it is. Put it onto the board. You can see how thin it is. Uh, yeah, you can you can strip down a Cat5 cable or something if you wanted to use that. You could probably use speaker wire if you wanted to, but that's getting on a bit thick. Because what we're going to do here is we're going to thread all the Kynar wire through these pin header holes. You'll see that the ones on the edge of the board here, they're never filled. So uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll drop them up with a bit of solder in a minute. And get into this, this part here, can you see that? This is where the wires are going to be soldered to. At the other end, these are already pre-filled. Uh, the pin headers are pre-filled. Now, I've already done the NAND part. I'm not going to show you how to do the NAND. Um, Team Executor have got a NAND kit. It's called the NANDX. Unless you want to get an LPT cable and start doing all sorts of resistors and bore like soldering to to an old printer cable. Um, your best bet is just to get an executor Nandex. Yeah, they're about 20, 30 quid. Probably cheaper now. But uh, so much easier to install. And once you've got that in place, you can then go on and do your JTAG wiring. So, as I mentioned, this is just JTAG wiring, just for a Xenon, using diodes and wire. Nothing else. A bit of heat shrink tubing to make it tidy. Doesn't have to be costly. Team Executor also do the JTAG kits, which are mini printed circuit boards. But these mini printed circuit boards, I found, are a complete bastard to fit. The NAND quick solder boards from Team Executor are great because they've got copper coating on the top and bottom of the points you need to solder to the board. They go on nice and easy. The JTAG ones not so well because they're not there's no copper on the bottom of the boards and I find it turns into a bit of a bit of a nightmare to try and get the solder to flow. So why not go out and spend I mean how much did I spend on these anyway? It was fuck all. Jesus. It was a quid. Okay then. I spent a quid for a hundred of these diodes and that was including shipping. So Jesus. This is going to cost me 2p to do the JTAG wiring. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get on with it. So I'll fire up my uh, solder iron, which is a gas one. So you'll hear some... It's not me sparking a split. Do I have my gas soldering iron? Let that get up to warm. In fact, what I'll show you is I've just got prepared here three pieces of Kynar wire, two the same length, one a bit smaller, end stripped off. Those two black bits are heat shrink tubing, and those are our two diodes. We've got solder. We've got our solder cleaner, we've got some flux, and we've got the board. So, let's do it. Okay, I'll try and get this. This is, uh, like I say, it's not the best quality, but at least you'll get an idea. It looks daunting at first, doing a JTAG. Uh, I looked at it for a few months, and I'm denied about it. My soldering skills are decent, but to be honest, it's not that hard. It's more a problem trying to get the NAND correct and get your free boot images working. So, 
what I'm going to do first is it's the two holes in the middle here that are going to be filled so I'm going to drop a bit of solder on the outsides flip the board and I'm going to drop a bit on the front side now I'm just going to get a tiny bit of solder on the end of my iron In, yeah, it's be easier. I'll just drop this solder in the holes, and oh, look at that! Lovely, John Field. That's two fields. Um, if you had leaded solder, the old days of leaded solder were lovely. It flowed so much easier. It seemed to melt quicker as well. Nowadays, I just don't like the solder that we've got. Health and safety and all, I suppose. So now, if you look, the two middle holes have got some solder in the front. This will just make it nice and secure. So now the back, you can see, it's starting to pop through the back as well, that one. It's all good. So let's... Pop the back up. Oh, lovely. And there we have the back hole fills. So, take your diodes. You want the black strip on the diode to be towards these two points. Yeah? So, nice simple job there, yeah? Let's heat up the hole while pushing the diode through. There's one in. Should have okay, so now you can see. Try and get a better view of that. There we go. Two diodes are in place. So, trim these legs now. Doesn't need to be that long. Need a workbench desperately. This is a coffee table. It doesn't really serve its purpose for fucking a solder bench. But hey ho. So now I've snipped them. As you can see. Now take our heat shrink tubing. Take our coin our wire, and then pop the tubing over the wire like so yeah um, maybe flux up quick touch of flux quick touch of flux on the end of these quick touch of flux on the exposed bits of this kind of wire just makes everything flow nicely Just tin the end of my solder on a little bit, and is that on the screen? Yeah. And then join that to that. So if you look, The tube goes over the top, fits nicely over the diode and the exposed bit of wiring. Job done. So let's do the next one. 
same principle. This is a bit more fiddly, bendy centre one. Slip my heat, slip my heat shrink. Oh, let's do that. Okay, heat shrink on. And there's the end result. So, what you can do now is I could use the gas from the soldering iron, I suppose, the heat from the soldering iron, but lighter. Brisk lighter run all over. Voila, it's shrunk out of the heat shrink tubing, nice and tight. They ain't going anywhere now. And there's going to be no potential shorts because there's no exposed, uh, no exposed points. So once you've done that, you can just gently. Bend these back. Nice and flat. Nearly flat. And we can now solder to the other part of the board. So, this is going to be quite quick now, hopefully. What we'll do is, the next part, as I pointed out earlier, is... These here. Now I'll put up a, a diagram at the end of this. Uh, I'm doing all this on the under, underside of the board. You'll find that all the diagrams online for this show you the top top view of the board. So you need to flip everything as if like a mirror image for the underside of the board. Just to make things easier, I'll stick up um, a photo at the end showing what points go where. 